Because oftentimes we'll sit there and let the past determine who we think we are. And that could be misinformation. If you were told all your life that you're not worth anything, that you'll never amount to anything, or that you did things that were wrong or bad and you should always feel guilty about it or whatever, you need to let it go. And I looked up and I noticed the boat was coming back towards me. And I, of course, yelled, hey, stop the boat! But nobody could hear me. They're all on the boat having fun, laughing, and, and uh, of course, you know, the sound of the engine. And I, I see it, it continues to come towards me. And I think, I gotta swim and get out of here. So I turned to start swimming and, and look back over my shoulder and I could see this huge propeller right underneath the water coming right at me. And then I made one last effort, got tied up in the ski ropes, and the next thing I knew, wham, I was hit. And both of my legs were sucked into the propellers. So I could feel the propellers as they were crawling up my legs, tossing me back and forth underneath the water. And I'm trying to keep my head up so that I can breathe, and then all of a sudden, all this chaos turned to a deadly silence. I opened my eyes, and I looked around me, and that dark green eastern Oklahoma water had now turned to a bright... You saw that I'm a mountain climber, yes? yes. What's different about my mountain climbing? I got one leg. All right, which one is it? Right, right. come on guys, we've got two choices here. Where are we going? It is, it is the right leg. I will show it to you here. All right, here it is. And I know what you're probably thinking. That poor guy, he only has one leg. Well, that's not true. I got about six or seven of these in my closet at home. Because, see, if you let everything out here determine when you're happy and when you're sad and all that kind of stuff, you're going to be riding a roller coaster all your life. And for the most part, you're going to be riding down toward the bottom. But if you can learn to tap that strength and that power within you, then you get to determine that. And no matter what happens out here, good day, bad day, whatever, you're steady on the inside. You'll make better choices. You'll do better things for your life, and you'll definitely help others. So I went into the operating room to prove this theory. I was wide awake, didn't even have an aspirin in me. While I was lying there, they numbed me below the waist. I was talking to the doctors. They fired up the saw, and they amputated my right leg. Well, eventually... I was getting out of the hospital, but you know, one of the one questions I kept asking while I was in there, it was the same question I was screaming when they pulled me out of the water, and that was, why? Why me? Because have you ever had something happen to you? And you thought, why? Why do I have to go through this? Why do I have to experience this? This isn't fair. What did I do? And sometimes you can get your answer right away. Sometimes it might take days, weeks. In my case, it was going to take almost 20 years before I was going to realize what the why was to this. And I will tell you how you will know when you have your answer. And that is when that answer not only blesses you, but it blesses others. Now how would I prove that I was at the high point? Well what I would do, because I could have just come in here and say, hey, I went and climbed all these mountains and if I didn't have any proof, who would know? Well what I would do is I would go to the top of the mountain and there would be a little marker called a USGS, or United States Geological Survey marker. This one's for Katahdin, K-A-T-A-H-D-I-N. That's the highest point of Maine. I saw the northern end of the Appalachian Trail. 
So I would go and I would step on it, time, uh, take a photo, time and date, stamp the photo, and that would prove that I was at that high point. Also, very few people have the same serial number on their right foot that I do. <laughs> Here's the highest point of Delaware. It's actually in the middle of a street, but you laugh. However, it was a very busy street. <laughs> Saw lots of animals. Recognize this one? Come on, guys. Moose, I'm, I'm hearing it. You're <laughs> not too sure. Okay. How about this? Now, this happened to be a friendly snake, but I figured if he would have bit me in the leg, he would have been in for a bigger surprise than I would have. <laughs> of course, sometimes they weren't as friendly. But you know, a lot of times the dangers in life don't just lie out there in the middle. Sometimes they're hidden. And those are the ones you're really going to have to watch out for. Fear will hold you back. Fear is something you create in your head. Recognize the dangers. Take the precautions you need to take. And then move forward. But you never have to fear anything. And if you do fear it, then you're in that box and you're limiting yourself to the possibilities of finding... I was hiking along, and I came around this turn in the trail, and I saw it sitting right there, and I made no eye contact. And I slowly, very slowly, backed up and got out of there. Okay, it is the North American rock lizard. Really? <laughs> I would expect more from this group. <laughs> it's a painted rock, and fortunately they move very, very slowly. Behind a decision. When you get focused on something, and you're willing to put everything you've got behind that decision, you can make it happen. Could you have ever imagined if you were to go back when you were 15, 20 years old, some of the things that have happened in your life, some of the things that you called good or bad, no, probably not. And you know, from where you are right now, there are going to be some other things that are going to happen in your future. And some of them are going to be wonderful experiences, and some of them are going to be tough. But hopefully you're going to learn from those things from the past, so that when these tough ones come up in the future, they're going to be turned into good things, into blessings for your life, and you're going to be able to turn them into blessings for others. All right, here we are, Guadalupe Peak, which is the highest point of Texas. Texas. Very good. Has anybody ever been out to this high point? Okay, a few of you have. All right. Uh, this is where I got 118 degrees when I was climbing, and uh, if you haven't been out there, it's out toward El Paso and, and that area. There's a lot of beautiful open range out there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. So I got a picture of some of it for you. <laughs> then, when I'm ready to stop, I'll take this edge right here, dig it in the side of the mountain, <laughs> lay down on top of it, and I freeze. Very good. Now, if you're wondering if I ever fell, Look at this climbing axe. Does it look like I ever fell? Yeah, yes. <laughs> a few times. I have fallen many, many times. But the mark of a true winner is not about falling. Because everybody is going to fall. Everybody is going to make a mistake. Don't let your mistakes keep you down. Even if your parents, friends, well-meaning boss or whoever feels like they want to hold you down with them. Get back up. And I don't mean get back up one time or three times or 297 times. You get back up every single time. And whatever it is you do and you decide it's really important to you, think of it in terms of doing it 100%. Because whenever you let that one little 1% 1 in there, that's when you start making exceptions. That's when you start messing up. And it's that 1% that's going to separate 
the people that are true leaders that go on and make an amazing contribution to this world and those that just get through. It's that little. This is called the football field. And from here on up, it's Pig Hill and to the top. When I was at that point, I was already pretty scared. I had two body bags drug in front of me. One was a frozen climber. They found him hanging upside down on his rope. The other one, they found him with the radio next to his head like he was talking into it, frozen to death. And he was hired by the park service to teach safe climbing techniques. So this mountain could get anybody no matter how good you thought you were. I was pretty scared at this point. Like I said, but I kept taking one step after another, even though it was incredibly painful. There were times I just wanted to give up. So the idea behind this climb was, look, we all have our challenges. We're going to have them all through our lives. And you cannot predict the greatness that lies within you. Whatever the dream is that you have right now, it's probably nothing compared to the dream and the reality of what you could really have in your life. If they would have came to me and said, Todd, you only have one leg, you shouldn't be climbing mountains, it's okay. I could have accepted that. Just like you could accept, hey, you know what? It's okay, you kind of grew up in this family or you only have this much money or you only, you're only this smart or whatever. You know, we don't expect a lot out of you. I don't care what other people expect out of you. I care about what you expect out of yourselves. And each and every one of you has incredible unlimited potential within you. It's just up to you to discover it and to use it, not only for your own good, but for the I good a of person everyone. than I thought I was. You know what challenges you have in your life. You have, you've had them before, you're going to continue having them, you're having them today. But what's important is what lesson are you learning from them? And are you taking those lessons and applying them so that you don't have to go through that lesson again. Don't ever give up. Don't quit. You have a passion for something, keep moving. If you fall down, get back up. I wanted to quit. You're going to be the near, near the top sometime, and you're going to want to give up. You're going to think it's too hard. I don't have the money. I don't have the resources. I don't have the time, whatever it is. Quit making excuses for yourself. Keep moving. So I did at this point until eventually I hit the top of North America at 20,320 feet on a very beautiful and clear day. And very few climbers ever make it to the top of this mountain. And of course, they all have two legs. So here I was trying to climb to the highest elevation of all 50 states, something only 32 people in the world had ever done before. Over 1,000 people had climbed Mount Everest. A leg amputee had never accomplished it. I did become the first leg amputee to climb to the highest elevations of all 50 states. Also, the world record for doing it was 101 days set by the British mountain climber. Instead of 101 days, I ended up doing it in 66 days, 22 hours and 47 minutes, thereby shattering the world record 